Hey guys, and welcome to number 20 in the first Steps in Preparation series. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the uh, output nodes. Let's just open up um, the file we prepared last time. Um, that's what it was. And now, instead of focusing on this side, on the input nodes, we're going to focus on the output nodes. Okay. And um, by the way, at the end of all those compos compositor tutorials, it's kind of the goal that we'll have all the different nodes that we were talking about arranged in this in this uh, node editor so we can actually see what does what okay but now output nodes um we already know two of them we know the viewer output which just always um outputs whatever is inputted into it um as the backdrop and also in the uv image editor if you um, select viewer node of course um, it's just a way to look at all the different things in your scene so you can always see where happens what but it's not really of any significance once if you in, in your rendering or post-production process it doesn't um it's not the result the result is usually the composite and one other important thing that the composite does is it is necessary if you have full sample anti-aliasing, okay? Because right now you could also just image, save a copy, and then you could save the viewer output, okay? Then you wouldn't need the composite. But for full sample anti-aliasing, always the result that goes into the composite, as I showed you before in the last tutorial, or actually um, the one before that, I guess. Um, yeah, only the one, always the one inputted into the composite is actually used for full sample anti-aliasing. And one other thing important, um, right now if we hit F12, it renders our image as always, okay? Um, it will then disappear because our render output is not inputted into our composite, but that's not the point here. If we delete our composite, we can no longer render it, okay? Because even though our render layer is not inputted into the output, um, it is important that there is a composite node in our scene. For whatever reason that is, I'm not really, I'm not really sure, I must admit. But there needs to be a composite, okay? So we know viewer and we know composite, but there are others. And under output, you can see composite and viewer, and then split viewer. And the split viewer is pretty cool as well. Um, it allows you to compare two images, okay? So let's just set something up here real quick. Let's add in once again a mix node. And no, let's not do that. I was wrong. Um, let's add in a color balance node, as we talked about before, where you can adjust your image, duplicate it, like this. Now, take the image output over here, put it in there, and the one in there. And now let's change, let's do some weird changes here. Let's actually connect that to our standard viewer for now. And now let's just change something, let's make it weird. And by the way, always the viewer you have selected um, counts, okay? So you can see we get this very weird result there. Um, looks kind of fancy, kind of weird, um, kind of poisoning, poisonous. Anyway, and now we also change the lower one and we change that to something pinkish, which will look quite weird as well. Um, something like that. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Now we can compare those with clicking like this. Okay, you can see which one looks better. But there is one other way to do that. And that is by selecting the split viewer. We can then go like this, uh, like this, and then put that in down there. And now you can see we have both results right next to each other, and we can very well compare them. Okay. And, well, that doesn't really make... Oh, it... I accidentally cut them. Okay. And now you can actually switch between um, combining them on this axis, or like pink result, green result, or on the Y axis with green result, pink result. Okay. And then also the factor as for how much of each image is shown and the same, of course, on the other axis. Pretty cool to compare to compare two images. Okay. Also quite simple simple to use, the split viewer. And then we have um, the file output. <clears throat> and that is pretty cool as well. 
um, everything inputted into here will automatically be saved um, in the specified location. For example, let's say this is your rendering process, and you will always want it so that whatever comes out of the color balance node in each render is saved separately, because this is um, not your final image, because your final image is the one that goes into the composite, and let's say we do other stuff over here, and then the final composited image is something else, but it's all also like to have a... Um, it would like to save a an image that is somewhere in the node tree instead of the final one, okay? So you can just specify a location. For example, you can say, um, I don't know, projects, once again back, on the projects, new directory, um, file, output, or whatever, accept. And now if we render this, uh, let's just open up that directory so we can see what happens there. Um, output, file output. Um, let's just minimize that again. And now let's just um, render this. You can see it set file output for a very short amount of time. And now if we go into the folder, you can see nothing. Okay, um, we're getting there. Oh, I need to select file, file output, file output like this, accept, and now F12, and then you can see under file output we now have an image, and it is the processed, I guess, the green image. Yeah, here you can see it. <clears throat> and yeah, now if you are working on an animation, okay, then here you can specify the start and end frame that you want to capture, okay? So right now, it captures everything. But you can also say, for example, okay, I have an animation that has like 500 frames, and I want to capture the output from this color balance node from frame 50 to 200, okay? And start 50, you first have to set the end frame, apparently. And then those 150 frames will be saved or um, the color balance output from file from frame 50 to 200 will be saved in this file output folder. Um, yeah, this is quite handy because usually you can only save the final composite and with this node you can save the output of any node in your node tree at any time during an animation or just doing during a render. Um, yeah, that is pretty neat. And you can also in here, um, input the C channel, the depth channel, more on that channel uh, later, if you want to save that. But keep in mind that only OpenEXR files can save the C channel. Uh, I think Targa can't, yeah, only the OpenEXR. And then you can also change between the files, of course, in what, fi what file you want to render to, Targa, JPEG, PNG, OpenEXR, as just mentioned. And then do you want to get a black and white image, an RGB image, or an RGBA image? That should be RGB, yeah, RGBA. And um, yeah, that's basically your file output node. Um, so let's just add that to our collection over here as well. And then we have one final um, node, which is a bit weird, the levels node. Okay, and this just kind of reads your um, red, green, blue values, plus your luminance values, plus your combined RGB values, okay? And let's just delete that node, we don't need it for now. And now let's just add in, under color, a brightness contrast node, okay? So I guess most of you know what brightness and contrast means. Brightness just makes your image brighter. Let's just connect it to our viewer node here, to this one. Okay, now the brighter, the brighter it gets, but it also loses contrast. And the contrast just makes it more, yeah, just increases the contrast or decreases it and makes it more, like, ugly. <clears throat> okay, and then you can see over here all those values. Um, I must admit, I, I usually don't you have work with levels because levels just isn't something, you, well, you usually use. 
and um, but you can see what happens here. The brighter my image, the further all those values go to the right. And that just shows us the following. Um, the higher one of those, um, one of those lines are, uh, the more color we have on this value. And the further to the left it is, the darker, the further to the right, the brighter, okay? So right now we've got um, quite a few very bright values, which is kind of where the explosion of the fire is happening. And we've got quite a few pretty dark values, which is everything where it's black. And then we've got a few values in between, which are pretty dark, and then somewhere here, and yeah. You, you can see this is not a very accurate um, uh, output here visually because it is very a uh, low pixel you can really see what happens here and also you can see dependent on the on the brightness it suddenly has a very big line or a very small line which is weird because the line should always stay the same height but yeah it's just to see how it works and then we can also see look at the, at the red values so right now we have a few red values down here and a few ones quite up there and some in between but they're not very very strong now if we make everything red over here then you can see there are now much more r red values than before because nearly everything is red okay and once again the brighter we make that the further they travel to the right and the darker the further they go to the left same goes for green right now we have we should basically have no green values at all apparently there are apparently there are some and now they're suddenly gone now here they are again uh, weird thing uh, anyway, if we change all those things to green, of course, then we have much more green values. And then you can see they appear over here. Once again, the brighter those green values are, the more to the right they go, the darker more to the left. Same goes for blue. You can now see a few blue values here, not too many though. And finally, there's one very weird thing in my opinion, and that is the luminance key. Let's just, let's just go back to our default image. And the luminance kind of um, gives you the value of how bright or, 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 yeah, where the bright areas are in your image, how bright they are. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it because I think this is some kind of mistake probably. Um, but there are a few white lines, okay? They are pretty much exactly where the black ones are. Are now here some white lines um, indicating the luminance values of your image. Now you can barely see them because it's like white on the white ground. Um, but I don't really know what that's why that is this way, but yeah, it just is. And now you have two output types here: mean, which is kind of the average average values, and standard deviant or something is that called, which is kind of um, something else. Let me just uh, load up the definitions here on um, on the Blender wiki. You can see levels node. It can output a mean value or average of values or a standard deviation which measures the diversity of values. Uh, yeah, as I said, I had to look this one up because I have no idea what the levels node exactly does and what it's good for. But now I think I was able to explain it more or less. And um, yeah, as you can see, if you connect that to your viewer output, it kind of gives you like ha an average value in red, apparently. Here it gives it in... Um, red as well. What happens if we change all that to blue? Then it just becomes dark but it's still red. Yeah, as you can see, it's a bit weird. If you know more about this node, please as well post it in the comments because I don't. Um, okay, so this is, by the way, also the node, one of the nodes I've really never used before. And I didn't miss it either. Okay, so this kind of completes... Um, or set of output nodes, as you can see. Composite, the one you use for your final image, um, and also if you have, of course, full, full sample anti-aliasing, this is always the image that actually gets full sample aliased. Then our viewer output to see what happens where. Split viewer to compare two images at, yeah, right at the same time without switching between the images. File output if you want to output an image from within the node tree at any given time in a animation or even just when rendering a still image and then the levels output to see the different color levels which I don't quite get. Um, cool! 
So that's it for now. In the next episode, we'll start adding more frames for the um, for the remaining categories. And yeah, I think our understanding of the compositor will increase by each episode. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you were able to um, to grasp it. I hope I, I didn't make it too difficult or too easy. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any kind of comments or questions, please post it in the comments. And yeah, see you next time.